Did Sony just enter the spatial race? Welcome to Spatial News, where by the end of this video, you will be more up to date than ever before on the latest news shaping our spatial futures. So let's jump right into the news. Imagine a world where virtual reality isn't just for gaming, but a powerful tool for professionals. Sony is turning this imagination into reality with its latest XR2 Plus Gen 2 standalone headset targeting enterprise applications. This advanced headset distinguishes itself as one of the initial devices to incorporate the Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2 chipset from Qualcomm. The standout feature of this chipset on this headset is the augmented performance capabilities, with the GPU and CPU functioning 15 to 20% faster. Sony's latest offering deliberately avoids any connection with gaming. The PlayStation 5, or the PlayStation VR or VR2 brands. So the focus is firmly on spatial content creation, tailored for enterprise users, diverting from the general consumer market and being more like basically what Quest Pro is trying to be. Collaborating with Siemens, Sony is venturing into industrial and professional applications, signaling a significant directional shift. A noteworthy aspect of the new Sony headset is a unique controller design featuring a dual setup of a pointing controller and a ring controller. This combination facilitates intuitive manipulation of objects in a virtual setting. The pointing controller is designed for use in the dominant hand, while the ring controller is worn by the fingers on the other hand. This design empowers creators to model 3D objects using both controllers in tandem with a keyboard even while wearing the head-mounted display. Practicality is a key element in the headset's design, evidenced by its flip-up feature. This design choice enables seamless transition between virtual and physical environments, enhancing user convenience for tasks like eating or interacting with the real world. Sony's ambitions extend beyond the hardware, though, and the company is poised to collaborate with developers in diverse 3D production software domains spanning from entertainment to industrial design. Plans also include supporting PC-based rendering for managing larger 3D models. In a strategic partnership with Siemens, Sony is developing a novel solution for immersive design and collaborative product engineering, integrating the capabilities of the Siemens Accelerator open digital business platform. I mean, just imagine how close we actually are to architects designing buildings in spatial computing headsets or engineers collaborating on a car design all in stunning 4K resolution. Well, that is literally the future that Sony's XR2 Plus Gen 2 headset is promising for professionals. Sadly though, this has absolutely nothing to do with gaming and if you are here to have fun and play games, this headset is probably not gonna be for you. Don't call it VR. That's exactly what Apple is saying as they've recently imposed a notable directive regarding how developers should describe their Vision Pro apps. They have explicitly instructed developers not to use common acronyms like AR for augmented reality, VR for virtual reality, MR, XR, and so forth when referring to their apps. Interestingly, despite these restrictions, Apple CEO Tim Cook had previously described the Vision OS operating system as an entirely new AR platform during its announcement at WWDC 2023. The operating system's core SDK is even named ARKit, which is prominently used for AR experiences on iPhone and iPad, as showcased on Apple's augmented reality webpage. Vision Pro, on the other hand, is defined by Apple as a spatial computer and not an AR headset. Moreover, in the new App Store submission requirements, developers are advised not to refer to Vision Pro generically as a headset. In a unique approach to the concept of virtual reality, Apple simply refers to VR as fully immersive, suggesting that immersion is a spectrum within spatial computing. This perspective implies that there isn't a need for specific terms to describe different points along the spectrum of immersive experiences. The extent to which Apple will enforce these guidelines remains unclear, especially regarding app titles. For example, it raises questions about whether popular apps like VR Chat and Super Hot VR would need to be rebranded to Spatial Chat and Super Hot Spatial, respectively, to be compatible with Vision Pro. Although that does sound incredibly stupid. 
Developers have been working with the Vision Pro SDK since June and are currently preparing their apps for the headset's launch on February 2nd. However, with the launch imminent, some developers may need to adjust their app branding to align with Apple's new requirements. I mean, Apple is literally killing VR. Seriously, Apple is literally saying VR is dead because nobody cares about it because nobody wants it. But this quote unquote new thing, spatial computing, people will want that. That's what Apple hopes anyway, and we're going to find out in about 10 days when pre-orders open on January 19th at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Apple's Get Ready ad for the Vision Pro is making waves as they have just released an intriguing teaser ad for the Vision Pro aptly titled Get Ready. The ad creatively prepares viewers for the experience of wearing a headset. It features a montage of clips from popular movies, donning various types of goggles, helmets, eye masks, and visors. The climax of the ad is a model putting on the Apple Vision Pro, revealing the Vision OS home screen through pass-through. Apple's marketing seems focused on normalizing the idea of wearing a headset for a broader audience. What I really enjoyed personally is how this ad completely echoes the Hello ad from the Oscars back in 2007. The ad that literally sparked an entire revolution. And Apple's looking to do it once again with Apple Vision Pro. HTC is taking VR tracking to the next level as they've just released a new full-face tracker add-on for the Vive XR Elite priced at $200. This innovative accessory magnetically attaches underneath the facial interface of the headset and connects via the secondary USB-C port next to the right lens. This placement is likely intended specifically for the add-on. The full-face tracker boasts impressive technology, including two 120Hz eye tracking cameras and a 60 hertz lower face tracking camera. It can track up to 38 points on your face in real time, encompassing various facial features like lips, teeth, tongue, cheeks, nose, and chin. HTC claims this precision ensures that even subtle movements will be recognized on the face. Get ready for an exciting addition to PlayStation VR 2 as Vertigo 2 is finally going to arrive after several delays and bringing its immersive gameplay to a whole new level and a whole new audience on PlayStation VR 2. Initially planned for October 24th and then pushed to December 12th before finally settling on the January date of January 15th, in addition to the digital release, a physical release was previously announced for February 9th, although it's unclear if this date remains the same. The PlayStation VR 2 launch comes after the release of the bottomless update for Vertigo 2 which was the first and only content update for the game. This update introduced various campaign modifiers, like an enemy randomizer and a bullet time feature. It also added three new playable characters and brought the level editor out of beta, allowing players to create and share levels within the community. Vertigo 2 has received critical acclaim, especially for its PC VR version. It was awarded the highest ranking in reviews, noted for its impressive visuals, engaging gameplay, and creative game design and world building. The game, which has been likened to Half-Life Alex, is considered an essential pick for PC VR players, seeking a solid single-player campaign. Its arrival on PlayStation VR 2 marks an exciting expansion for the title, offering PlayStation VR enthusiasts a chance to experience the acclaimed game. Quest 3 already has its first exclusive, if you can believe it, with Townsman VR. Developed by Handy Games, this game combines strategic city building with godsend elements, reminiscent of the flat screen classic Black and White. However, it's important to note that Townsman VR is not exclusive in the strictest sense, as it had previously been available on other platforms like PSVR 2 and PC VR. This release marks a notable shift for Meta as they had previously advised that there wouldn't be any exclusives for Quest 3 until 2024. Prior to Connect 2023, a spokesperson from Meta had stated that they don't have any specific Quest 3 exclusives, so everything that launches this holiday season until the end of the year will be available on Quest 2. Although exclusive features for Quest 3 versions of games like MR Support and Niku Atsumi Perfect have already been seen, but Townsman VR is the first main Quest Store game available only on Quest 3. 
The game has been well received in the past, with its 2022 review praising its impressive detail and approachable nature for newcomers. The game's ability to guide players through the process of creation and combat, coupled with the option to change perspectives for different levels of immersion, have been particularly lauded. Tasman VR is now available on pretty much all major VR platforms. And while it's not a really big deal that there's already one exclusive game, I honestly cannot help but imagine there being more as the year goes on. So, rest in peace, Quest 2. Rest in peace. Wi-Fi 7 is here, and it is set to revolutionize the world of wireless VR, offering improvements in speed, transmission, and notably, latency reductions, which are crucial for real-time applications like wireless VR streaming. Key features of Wi-Fi 7 that benefit wireless VR include multi-link operation and simultaneous transmission and reception. MLO allows devices to connect to multiple bands, e.g. 2.4, 5, and 6 GHz, simultaneously, increasing throughput and reliability. STR, on the other hand, enables devices to transmit and receive data simultaneously, further reducing latency. Nice! These advancements are particularly exciting for VR users as they promise to eliminate the motion sickness-inducing lag experienced in previous generations of wireless VR. With Wi-Fi 7, Users can expect seamless and immersive VR experiences with minimal latency. The introduction of Wi-Fi 7 certified products also paves the way for the development of wireless VR headsets that rely on Wi-Fi 7 for high quality, low latency streaming. This technology is expected to play a significant role in the future of VR gaming and applications. And that is gonna be awesome for virtual desktop, although I already have a pretty damn good router system right now that's Wi-Fi 6E and I love it. Although I gotta tell you, this whole thing about reducing latency, I mean, just even, even just a few milliseconds could make a huge difference. So I'm actually really, really excited about this. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe and also follow me on Twitter at WafiOnYT. Go ahead and watch another video coming up and I will see you in the next one.